Hi, this is Bill, and you are on Finest Travel Beat with Angela and Bill. On today's video, we are going to take you on a walkthrough, ship tour, and review of the Carnival Liberty, which we sailed on several months ago. We'll show you around the ship, tell you what we liked, what we thought could have been improved, and as always at the end, give us our final thoughts with who the ship may be for and who it might not be for. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's start off with a little introduction of the Carnival Liberty. Uh, this particular sailing was at a Port Canaveral, Florida, and it sailed over Thanksgiving weekend, which was interesting, and I will talk a little bit more about that later in the video. The Carnival Liberty was built in 2005. It has a dry dock scheduled for September 2023. It's a medium-sized ship with 14 decks, a total passenger capacity of about 3,500 people, and holds a total crew of about 1,100 people. It's 110,000 tons, and I would put this in the medium ship range as far as today's cruise ships go. We'll start you off on the panorama deck in the aft portion of the ship. This area has uh, quite a bit of lounge chairs, plenty of space, seems to be somewhat quiet and uh, overlooks the Versailles pool. Now we're going to head up one deck to the spa deck. On the spa deck, as you can see, there's a, a running track. Again, this is the aft part of the ship. They're storing some chairs back here, but as you can see, there's also a shuffleboard area there. Uh, a lot of times these aft portions of the ship, especially in the uh, upper decks, tend not to be as used. Uh, joggers obviously will find it. People are looking to walk. But sometimes these back decks, if you're looking to get away from the crowds and get someplace a little bit quieter, uh, explore the ship. Uh, Angela and I, when we first go on a cruise ship, we walk the whole thing. We go from top to bottom. We look at maps and we try to find those undiscovered places, the bars that are kind of hidden away that are uh, generally not as crowded. On embarkation day, if you can find a bar that's not jammed crowded, that's probably the bar you want to be at for the rest of the cruise. Spa deck, you'll see sports courts. There is basketball hoops, obviously. It looks like it's set up for volleyball as well. Um, I didn't see pickleball on this particular cruise, but that seems to be a popular thing. A lot of cruise lines are uh, setting up uh, pickleball courts and actually pickleball tournaments for those that uh, enjoy that. Now, as you can see, walking along forward again, we are overlooking the panorama deck, which is one below us. And then also down a couple levels into the main pool area. This video I took early in the morning. Uh, we tend to do that so we don't get too many people in the video. But trust me, within a couple of hours, the place was pretty crowded. And this was also on a port day that we visited the, I don't want to say private island, but the destination of Bimini, which is generally a Virgin Voyages destination. We'll probably do another video on that because it's a very unique place that not a lot of ships go to. And it's definitely a different experience. As you can see here, looking aft, again, from the panorama deck, or actually this is from the spa deck, we're looking down two levels into the Versailles pool, which is a technically quieter area and adults-only pool. As you can see, the jogging track in this deck is not huge, but it does have an advantage if you're looking to jog that it is not go through the main pool area. So you're probably not going to have to dodge over loungers and things like that as you are jogging along, which is a nice little advantage. Now about this ship, I kind of refer to this as a medium-sized ship. When it was launched, this was considered one of the largest ships in the world. As we know, technology has changed so much and the ships are getting larger and larger. But I'm still glad there's a place for the smaller and the uh, the medium-sized ships in the cruising world. Many people are overwhelmed by the 
largest and newest ships that are out there. Now we're on deck 10 or the panorama deck. The panorama deck houses some staterooms. It also overlooks the Carnival Seaside Theater. Diamond Steakhouse is on this level and the Fish and Chips restaurant is also on this level. And again, it overlooks the main pool area. Now we're going to take you down to everybody's favorite deck, which is the Lido deck. The Lido deck obviously houses the Lido buffet, as it's commonly referred to on just about every cruise ship. We're walking you through the buffet now. I just want to point out as we're going through, the, the ship is really beautiful. I was surprised for an older ship how well maintained it was, especially the decor. The decor is uh, definitely an Italian theme, Venetian specifically. But we really, when we stepped on the ship, we were actually kind of surprised that the ship was as beautiful as it was. Now, food is subjective, and I won't go into food too deeply, other than to say, and this is as we passed the deli area where they made sandwiches to order, which you can see is very popular, especially at night. I really enjoyed the food there. They have excellent options on Carnival in general. Guy's Burgers, on some ships they have Jack's Chicken. Again, I think there's great options for getting food at any day. And while it may not be everybody's gourmet liking, I think you can find something for everybody. Angela and I have never had an issue finding food on Carnival Cruise Lines. And as we're passing the Mongolian Walk, unfortunately, we've never walked away from any cruise having lost weight. See over here is a beverage station. They have coffee juices, lemonade, iced tea. Those are all complimentary. They also have these BS stations, which I have never used because usually they don't work. And frankly, I don't know that there's any value in it. Angela's favorite spot, Swirls, where you can do soft serve ice cream. I don't know if that was open 24 hours a day. I would have to check that, but the times on things are changing. Also, there's Blue Iguana Cantina, where they have Mexican food. It was not open for breakfast while we were on the sailing, but sometimes it is. Walking through here, you see the main pool area. There's Guy's Burger. Guy's Burger, if you haven't had a Guy's Burger, they are excellent. Plenty of toppings. The fries are great. Always a popular spot on any Carnival cruise. Now we are in the aft area of the Lido deck and the Versailles pool area. The Versailles pool area is a quieter area. I believe it was adults only back here. Didn't see any kids. It also does have a roof that kind of goes over it to protect you if it's rain or it's very chilly. Over here was a bar. Never too crowded at this bar. And the service was excellent. If you were around the pool, they had waiters coming over all the time. Pizza is also back this way, which uh, if you've had Carnival Pizza, generally that's rated pretty favorably. We enjoy it. Now, over this side is the Seafood Shack Grill. This is, I believe, only on the Carnival Liberty. It's an additional cost. It's a New England-style seafood bar. We did not try it. Generally, if you grab and go, we're going to do Guy's Burger or one of the other restaurants. We're not huge seafood fans, and if we are, we prefer to sit down. But it was an option, and people seem to enjoy it. Now, we are back into the main pool area. It's a little bit later in the day, so as you can see, it's got much more crowded. There is the Red Frog Rum Bar, which tends to have more rum-based options. Here's the main pool. That obviously on Carnival Cruise, especially selling capacity, is going to be very busy. On the other side is the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Again, that one would be more tequila-based drinks rather than rum-based drinks. Lots of kids out there, so we didn't really do too much filming of the pool area. As you can see, there's Carnival Liberty that was a... Mosaic granted them by the Fincantieri shipbuilder who built the Carnival Liberty. Beautiful 
Again, you can see just the artwork around it was really nice, the mosaics. Just really impressive, especially considering it's an older ship and it's scheduled for dry dock to do some, I guess, repairs and maintenance and things like that. But for a ship that is 18 years old, it just didn't have the feel of an 18-year-old ship. I was, We were all really pleasantly surprised we walked onto it, which is very, very pretty. Now, we're walking in the forward section of the spa deck. The spa deck is split into two areas that you kind of go from one to the other. There are state rooms on here. There is massage rooms. There's a beauty salon and a gymnasium as well as their spa, hence the name spa deck. If you're enjoying this video, we invite you to subscribe. We owe you a lot of videos. We've been very busy lately with our travel business, so we're a little behind, but we've been on a bunch of cruises. We've been to some all-inclusives. We're going to try to upload them as quickly as possible. When you subscribe for free, you just get notified when we do a new video. It helps the channel out a lot because it tells Facebook that people like what we're doing, and it encourages us to, to do more. And also, please leave comments. If you've been on this ship or you have any questions, we love to interact with people. We have a Facebook group as well, Finest Travel Beat with Angela and Bill. And now, as you can see, we are on deck 12, which is a sun deck. This is a smaller deck, and it houses uh, two very interesting areas, uh, Camp Ocean which and Camp Carnival, which is their children's areas we will not film in these areas as you can see there are three different areas for various ages of children we won't film in there for obvious reasons and it also houses the serenity area on the other side which is a little odd that you have them both on the same deck so on this side which is the port side you have the camp carnival and back behind there was the Camp Carnival Kids outside areas. As you see, we have some ping pong as well. Always entertaining watching people try to play ping pong when the ship's at sea and it's windy. But I digress. Now we're going to take you up one deck to an upper serenity area. It is on deck 14. Deck 14 has the entrance to the slide. And then also the main Serenity adult-only area. As you walk through this area, we didn't spend a whole lot of time up here. It did tend to get a little crowded. And as you can see, there's not a ton of loungers. There are two hot tubs located at the back. And those were pretty much full most of the time. So it was also only a three-night cruise, so we really didn't have a whole lot of time to spend in every venue and check them out now again this is on deck 12 there is another serenity area on deck 11 which is on the opposite side of where camp ocean was we can walk down here as you can see this was a little bit less crowded on this side on this deck than it was up on top there is also a bar in this area and again this is an adult only area the Lounges have some nice cushioning on them. If we were to go back on the ship, we'd probably spend a little bit more time back this way than we did on other parts of the ship. Now that pretty much concludes the open areas of the ship. So we're going to take you on an elevator ride now. Beautiful elevator that goes through the garden atrium. We're going to take you all the way down to deck three, which is the lobby deck and the flowers lobby as it's called. Now, no, you're not confused. We are behind on uploading videos because it's been so busy over the past couple of months. The ship was decorated for Christmas. And if you've never been on a cruise that has been decorated for Christmas, you're really missing something. They are beautiful and they do a great job with the holidays. But to continue on tour, we're going to take the, right, the elevated right back up to the promenade deck, which is deck five. As you can see, we're towards the forward part of the ship. And we are about to enter the Angel's second favorite area behind Swirls, which is shopping. We were in port, so the shops weren't open. Again, it was a short three-night cruise, so we didn't really have a whole lot of opportunity to 
film inside the shops and things. We love doing these videos, but we also, our number one goal is to vacation and to take it all in. And if we spend our entire time with just trying to videotape things and get everything perfectly and hit all the shops with video, we feel we miss the experience. And quite frankly, we don't want to miss the experience. We enjoy cruising too much. So we like to bring you along, but we also like to enjoy ourselves. Now, that showcase we were just looking at is gifts that were given to them when they first call on a port. We were lucky enough to be on the Carnival Ecstasy's last sailing, and we won a auction benefiting St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And we got a few items of the Carnival Ecstasy that were given to them by the Port of New York and the Panama Canal. Port of Miami and Cancun that we have, uh, we won, and we have some of those things hanging in our house uh, before the Carnival Ecstasy was scrapped, which is really, really cool. Uh, we we were blessed, and the money went to a good place as well. Oops, I missed one of Angela's third favorite places, which is not necessarily the casino, but cherry on top of the candy store. As I'm sure you know, Angela is a, a big kid, and that's one of the things that makes her amazing. We were able to film a little bit in here because, again, we were in port, so the casino wasn't active. It's kind of a typical carnival layout where you have the casino on one side and the an area you can walk through on the other side. There is a, there's a nice large bar by the edge of the casino. Great bartenders. Great people working on the ship. They really work hard to make it an amazing experience for you. Walking to the aft of the ship again, this area is Carnival Adventures, which is their shore excursion desk. It wasn't open at this point. Also over here is the Internet Cafe area and the saddest place on the ship, which is where you pick up your luggage tags for disembarkation time, meaning they're going to kick you off the ship the next day. Here is, I believe they call it the Taste Bar. It's a coffee bar. The things here are an additional cost. We did not try any of them. But as you can see, they have some cakes and some specialty cupcakes. They, again, are not included. They're an additional charge. So we skipped that during our cruise. Here's Club O2. It's for ages 15 to 17. It's a teenage club. They aren't open 24-7. They're only open certain hours, but it is a club. Uh, generally, it's open in the evening time for the teens and the kids to kind of hang out. One of the great things about cruises is, is when you bring kids on it, a lot of times their first cruise, they are kicking and screaming. They do not want to go to the kids' club. They don't want to go to the teen club. Well, by day two, you generally don't see your kids unless they're running around with a pack of new friends. And in almost every case... Almost every kid that I've ever known is going on a cruise. They end up becoming Facebook friends with the people that they met on the cruise ship and keep in contact with them, which is awesome. Now, back here is a nightclub. As you can see, they were setting up for the auto auction. I don't believe Angela allows me into auto auctions anymore because we spent an ungodly amount of money on a cruise about five years ago and decorated our house. But... Uh, auto auctions are kind of fun. They usually give you free champagne. It's something to check out, but just try not to spend thousands of dollars on them if you don't have to. Back here is the Alchemy Bar. They do specialty cocktail drinks. Flair bartending, so to speak. They will do martinis, and that's a pretty cool place to hang out as well. We've been on the Alchemy Bar on several other carnival ships, and it's it's always a fun place to be. Now we're entering the Piano Man Bar, appropriately named. This is where they have somebody there taking requests and playing piano music and singing. It always gets crowded. If you want to go to this bar, get there early. I suggest getting there when they open or even earlier than when they open. We did go here one night. Quite honestly, the piano player that was playing was not very good, which is unusual, usually... We're big fans of the piano entertainment. Now we're walking back towards the Victoria Lounge. The Victoria Lounge is a little bit larger venue. 
there was nothing going on right now, but they tended to hold some events that were a little bit larger back here. They had the comedy show was back here. They also will have some other larger events, and they probably keep this as a bit of a area where they'll have uh, cocktail receptions and things like that for private groups and private events. But again, we went to the comedy show here. It was pretty crowded. We got there early. Again, comedy shows usually pack in pretty early. So we suggest just like in the piano bars that comedy shows you get to early. And here we have another bar located towards the back. It is the stage bar. We did not attend any events that went on in there. I don't know how active it was during our sailing. Now we're going to pop down to deck four, which is the Atlantic deck. On deck four is the Silver Olympian restaurant. This is the main dining room where they serve, obviously, dinner nightly. I believe they do breakfast on almost every day in this restaurant. And then they will have brunch or lunch. Usually, on most cruise lines, it's on sea days only that they will do the lunch on board. Otherwise, it would be at the buffet or the grab-and-go, like Shaq's Burger in the... Uh, Blue Iguana, pizza, things of that nature. Now, across from, well, across the elevator lobby from the restaurant on this deck is the Cabinet Cigar Bar. We kind of discovered this on accident. We did not see anybody ever in here. I am not 100% sure it still acts as a cigar bar. It looks like they were doing some sort of deep cleaning. As you can see, there's fans going on while we were there. But again, this seemed like a, a pretty nice venue. It was kind of hidden away. Curious to see whether that's a an active cigar bar on most sailings or not. If you've been on the Carnival Liberty and you know, please let us know in the comments below. Now, as you can see, we are back up on the promenade deck. As you may or may not know, you generally can't walk from the restaurants, which are in the aft portion of the ship, to the forward part of the ship on most Carnival cruise ships. They have a galley in between, so to get from aft to forward on uh, this particular ship on decks three or four, you have to go up to deck five and kind of walk over and across. Continuing our walk on deck five, the promenade deck, there was some seating over here, and as you can see, it looks down on the lobby deck and also the Atlantic deck. Also up here is the Skybox Sports Bar. They show various games, show a lot of cricket on cruise ships. It's very popular in the Caribbean. So you'll see some cricket, but this was a Sunday and it was pretty packed because they were showing Sunday football. They had a bunch of TVs in there and various games being shown. So that is always a pretty popular spot anyway. As you see walking along the, the more shops, there are... They had plenty of logo merchandise, ship models, t-shirts, hats, things of that nature. They also sold some uh, some handbags, uh, jewelry, makeup, some perfume, and various other duty-free and tax-free items. Now let's take it back down to Deck 4, or the Atlantic Deck, and now we're midship. Like I said, we had to go up and over and across to get down to the Deck 4. Deck 4 is Pixels photo gallery as they take pictures of you at embarkation day into various ports and at dinners and things like that they'll print them out they'll put them up on the wall and then you can purchase them as you like they also sell retail items such as frames they sell gopro cameras various other things sometimes they have regular cameras some nice lenses depending on the cruise ship you're on accessories camera accessories charms all kinds of other different photo-related items. Now, somehow I missed there is a library also located across from the photo gallery on Deck 4. We did not get video of that. My apologies on that. Uh, we are walking now down to Deck 3. Deck 3 is the lobby bar area. I believe it's called the Flowers Lobby. Now, they had a lot of events in here. They had trivia going on. 
personally, I didn't think it was a big enough area for them to hold as many events as they did. They did have live music going on in here sometimes. Live music was pretty good. But it was a small venue for doing trivia. It got very crowded. It was standing room only most of the time. Also on this deck is guest services as we just walked past. And then also the main shore excursion desk is over here as well. Unfortunately, somehow we don't have video of the Venetian Palace, which is the main theater or lounge where they had various production shows and the nightly entertainment going on. It was kind of stereotypical of a main theater layout with a couple of decks. The entertainment on the ship was very good. The shows in the main theater we definitely enjoyed very much. Before we give you our final thoughts, we, once again, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you're gaining value from this. It costs you nothing, helps us out, and you also get notified when we do more videos. Uh, again, I apologize that we're so delayed in putting these out. Let's talk about the Carnival Liberty. Now, the Liberty, like other Carnival Cruise Line ships, they are fun ships. They build as fun ships. They provide excellent value. They're generally reasonably priced, and they are great for families, for multi-generational families. Plenty of stuff to kids to do, especially the younger kids. The Carnival Liberty is not for somebody that's looking for a brand new ship. The ship is a little bit older. While it's still beautiful, it lacks a lot of the amenities and the size to put uh, additional specialty restaurants and, and some of the things that people are looking for. It's also not for somebody looking for an adult-only experience. Carnival in general caters, again, towards families, and a lot of them are younger children that are on board. If you're looking for five-star luxury, you're probably going to be looking someplace else. While the service is great, it's not white glove service. It is, some people call it the Walmart of cruising. I find that to be very, very unfair. Carnival is an excellent product, and their workers work very hard to bring you a great experience. But again, the guest-to-staff ratio is not what you would see on a celebrity or a princess or a Cunard or one of the other cruise lines that you pay considerably more for. Would Angel and I cruise on the Carnival Liberty again? Yes, we would. We enjoyed the cruise. We felt the staff was amazing. The value is great. And for the right length of cruise and the right pricing, sure, Carnival is, provides a good experience as long as you understand what you are looking for, and what you are getting in the experience. Well, anyway, on behalf of Angel, we'd like to thank you for watching. We really appreciate your support. And until next time, come join us on our next adventure. Bye-bye, everybody.